Hello and welcome to Alyssa Jean's Reviews. My name is Alyssa and um, this is my monthly uh, trans video. Each month I do a video related to my life as a trans woman. And sometimes I do two. I usually do at least one. This one's going to be a little different than normal. This is the political ramblings of a trans woman. So I'm going to be looking at the state of politics in the United States right after the midterms from an LGBTQ perspective. That doesn't mean I'm going to give you the LGBTQ perspective or the trans perspective. This is just me, one singular trans woman, one singular member of the LGBTQ community, giving you a perspective. I'm not necessarily representing the entire community. Uh, within each community, there are different uh, flavors of life, different opinions all over the place. Um, but this is a perspective from that community. Um, and I don't usually do political videos, or at least videos that are entirely about politics. Um, not because I'm worried about offending uh, people in the right wing or conservatives or Republicans. Like, honestly, conservatives, Republicans, right wingers, uh, they hate trans people. Uh, every bit of evidence that I've seen is that they hate trans people. So why would I care about offending them? Now, if you identify as a Republican and you say, no, no, I support you. I don't hate trans people. You might want to consider switching political parties. I'm just saying. Anyways, <laughs> so I don't care about offending them. Who cares? Like they hate me anyways. Um, they're probably not watching me. And if they are, they're just watching me so that they can troll me. Um, so the reason why I don't do political videos is because, quite frankly, it's been depressing. <laughs> um, politics in the U.S. has been depressing, and I wanted to not focus on that for my videos. My, my videos were supposed to be more of an escape, but the recent events, uh, there are some reason to be optimistic. Um, so I decided to go ahead and do a video because there can be some optimism in this, although I am also going to be a Debbie Downer <laughs> in this video too because I'm going to warn you to be cautious and not get complacent and uh, understand that uh, the world still really sucks, especially the political landscape in the U.S. still really sucks, even if we had some uh, significant victories uh, recently. Uh, so let me get into that. I know that I have some international subscribers, international viewers. So just a quick summary. The United States just recently had its midterm elections. That's the elections that come in between the two presidential elections. So we have presidential elections every four years. So 2020 and 2024, we have presidential elections. And the 2022 elections are right in the middle of that. Uh, so we're looking at not the president, but we're looking at which political party gets control of the House of Representatives, which political party gets control of the Senate. And uh, traditionally, the party that does not hold the presidency usually uh, gets their asses kicked in the midterms, or the or sorry, the, the party that does hold the presidency gets their asses kicked in the midterms, and the one that doesn't usually dominates in the midterms. And uh, the Republicans, who do not hold the office of presidency at the moment, uh, were expected to dominate the midterms, they were expected to not only take over the uh, U.S. House of Representatives by wide margins, they were expected to take over the Senate, they were expected to take over state legislatures that they do not currently have, which is key because state legislatures are where you're going to see your anti-abortion stuff coming out. It's where you're going to see your anti-LGBTQ stuff coming out in state legislatures. Uh, but it never happened. The Republicans didn't dominate this red wave that everyone was calling. It never happened. Um, the Republicans did take back the House of Representatives, but by the narrowest of margins, they have a very small margin. Um, they will get to control committees and all that sort of thing, but they're not going to pass anything. <laughs> and if they do, the Democrats still hold the Senate and the presidency, so uh, they're just not going to really be able to accomplish anything except be really irritating and do all these stupid investigations on Hunter Biden and all this nonsense. Um, the Democrats also held on to all the state legislatures that they already had, and all, I think most of the governorships that they already had, and they gained a couple of governorships. Um, and most importantly, all the crazy Trumper election deniers who are running in key positions all lost. Look at the state of Arizona, where you had both a governor and a secretary of state candidate in the Republican Party who uh, have flat out said that they were 
could just going to give the election to Trump, give Arizona's election to Trump in 2024, regardless of uh, what the votes say. Uh, there's no way Biden can win Arizona. Uh, th they're so lost, in their, stuck in their own egocentric world. They're like, well, all I see is Trump supporters everywhere I look. Yeah, because that's who you surround yourself by, you moron. <laughs> that was the Secretary of State. He was on John Oliver, or there was a segment of his interview on John Oliver, and he said that. Uh, so Secretary of State is a very key position. They control elections. Uh, they, they would be able to say, nah, Arizona wasn't won by Biden. It was won by Trump. Um, but thankfully, uh, the Republicans lost in those races. Same with Nevada. Nevada did have a, a Republican governor win, but not the Secretary of State. Um, Michigan Secretary of State. Um, Pennsylvania governor. There was a crazy uh, pro-Trump guy uh, running in Pennsylvania. Um, and then there's the one in Maryland, my original home state. Uh, but that guy was always going to lose, but he got his ass kicked. <laughs> because Maryland, Maryland's blue. Maryland's liberal. Uh, so, um, they all lost. So it was a win for, uh, democracy. And, uh, as, uh, my friend, not my friend, but the person that I like to watch on YouTube all the time, Cenk Unger, Cenk Unger, uh, said on election night, he said, this is a win for sanity. <laughs> Absolutely. Because uh, we were really afraid that the insane people were taking over, the insane election deniers were going to take over the country, and democracy was going to be gone as soon as 2024. And uh, that doesn't look like that case. It looks like we have a big win for democracy, a big win for sanity. And I do have to say that I took a big sigh of relief after the elections. <sighs> All right, it's not as bad as we thought. It's not as bad as we thought. We still have democracy. That's wonderful. But the main thesis of this video is going to be to talk about how um, we can't get complacent. And um, well, I'm going to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer because I am a little concerned um, that the, the narrative out there is that, oh boy, we've saved uh, democracy. Uh, sanity rules the day. We're done. Now all we have to worry about here is the normal Republicans. Like, that's not that bad. The normal, the moderate Republicans like Ron DeSantis. Normal, moderate. I'm here to tell you that uh, the, the normal Republicans are still awful just because they're not trying to end democracy. I mean, that's a low bar to clear. Like, oh, well, they're not trying to end democracy, so they're fine. No, they're horrible. <laughs> they're terrible. That's what I'm here to talk about. Uh, and with an LGBTQ focus, um, Ron DeSantis and these other uh, politicians uh, within that realm are all horrible against women uh, or anyone with a uterus uh, having control of their own body. <laughs> horrible against people of color. Uh, lots of different people. Really everyone, honestly. But uh, since I am in that community, I'm going to focus on LGBTQ and trans uh, rights. How uh, they are being threatened. Um, and it would be a, a dissent as presidency would be awful for us. So I, I get a little concerned that he's being propped up as this moderate or normal Republican just because he wasn't an, an explicitly an election denier. Um, so this is what I'm going to talk about in this video. So a lot is being made about the um, probable DeSantis versus Trump matchup in the Republican primaries for 2024, which will really begin next year. I mean, by the end of next year, uh, by the end of 2023, we're going to start getting into debates and all those sorts of things. The Republican primaries will be in full force, as will the Democratic primaries if Biden were to step down. But I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to run. Um, every indication is that he will. But in any case, uh, it'll be the Republican primaries, and it's going to be Trump v. DeSantis. Now, Trump has officially announced he did this big speech the other night. DeSantis hasn't, but it is still expected that that's going to be the case. And even Fox News is trying to prop up Ron DeSantis. Now people are done with Trump, except for his cult, his hardcore followers. So I'm going to say something a little bit controversial, maybe, amongst the left-wingers. 
I actually kind of want Trump to win that. And I'll tell you why. Because I don't think Trump has any chance of ever winning anything ever again. Uh, I think he pulled the wool over the eyes of some independents and moderates in 2016. They have all woken up. Uh, meanwhile, some younger people have turned 18. They are all very anti-Trump. Um, the women are very anti-Trump. More and more people are very anti-Trump. He's got his cult. He's got his followers who are, are would live and die by him. But the country as a whole approved in 2020 and then even more strongly in 2022 by voting against all of his people, all of the election deniers he was propping up by, by voting them out sometimes by large margins, uh, that uh, Trump is done. He's not going to win. Uh, I just don't think he's going to win. Whereas DeSantis, I worry about him being portrayed as this moderate and I worry that a lot of the independent vote, a lot of the moderate Republican, and even moderate Democrats will vote for Ron DeSantis. And I think, especially if it's DeSantis versus Joe Biden, I think Joe Biden doesn't have much of a chance. I think DeSantis wins. Whereas, um, honestly, the Democrats could put anyone up against Trump and win at this point. My grandma, back when she was alive, used to say, I'm a dead dog Democrat. Because I would vote for a Democrat even if it's a dead dog running against a Republican. <laughs> so um, I think a dead dog could literally be Trump at this point. Like it doesn't matter. Or even or an alive dog. Could, or maybe an alive dog could beat the... Be, be, I should run, um, run my dog Sawyer up against Trump in 2024. See what happens. But anyways, I just don't think he'll win. Um, now, there is the fear that um, Trump will try to end democracy again, um, but he is much less in a position to do that for 2024. Now, if he won, he would have a, he would once again be in a position to do it in 2028, but he would be in no position to do anything in 2024, as it would be a lot harder not already being installed in the White House, not already holding the office of the presidency, not having a vice president you can try to persuade to do your bidding. What's he gonna do, tell Kamala Harris that she has to sway the election for him? No, like he has nothing, he has nothing he can do. Now, he can incite violence he can incite another january 6 but what i'm here to tell you is so will ron DeSantis, and he will do it for four solid years and he has a much better chance of winning now ron DeSantis inciting violence is not going to look the same as trump inciting violence uh he does it more indirectly uh and he also has his minions out there um, on the media, particularly Tucker Carlson, particularly Matt Walsh, who have already been actively inciting violence. Um, so trying to imagine what a President DeSantis would be like uh, in that high position, in the limelight, um, being just still espousing that hateful rhetoric that he is already espousing. Um, now, when I first thought of this video, it was before, when I first thought of the concept of this video, it was before the recent uh, shooting at an LGBTQ club in Colorado Springs. Now that has happened. Now you see uh, where that hateful rhetoric can lead and where it will probably sadly continue to lead and it terrifies me um not just for the community but for me personally for anyone i know uh but also just the community at large um that, that that's where we're, we're headed we're gonna see more of that um and for that particular one i'm not blaming ron DeSantis in particular he had nothing to do with that um what i'm just saying in general the um the rhetoric that is out there that is hateful toward LGBTQ and trans community members, uh, that is the result that you're going to see as an LGBTQ club being shot up. Um, and I think it's going to get worse regardless of who wins the presidency, but I think if we have a president who is reinforcing that, whew, look out. Uh, things are not going to be pretty. Um, and I am, and it's, it's, it's also not just the politicians, but you know, it is the talking hands. It's the Tucker Carlson's, it's the Matt Walsh's. Um, 
I don't know if you guys have been following, I'm not going to get too much into the detail, but the, the Boston Hospital story where Matt Walsh and Tucker Carlson are saying that they're uh, mutilating children, um, which they are not. They are just providing gender-affirming care. They're not doing surgery, even if you want to call that mutilating. They're not even doing that. Um, the Boston Children's Hospital has already had a couple of bomb threats. Um, if there's a real bomb threat at some point and people die, I think Matt Walsh and Tucker Carlson need to be jailed in immediately. I think they should be held directly responsible for that. They won't be, but they should be because they are inciting violence. And this is only going to get worse. Uh, and this is why I don't want a DeSantis presidency. And I haven't even talked about the DeSantis policies. Hopefully the Democrats could take back the U.S. House uh, and then hold the Senate in 2024 so DeSantis wouldn't be able to do much through Congress, but he could still pass some executive orders. Trump passed some anti-trans executive orders, um, and so he could still do that. He can still go out and um, espouse the rhetoric. He can still incite violence, um, and he would as president of the United States. Now, again, I think it's going to happen either way, but I think it's going to be way, way, way worse um, if DeSantis was president. And I am only talking about one aspect of a DeSantis presidency. I'm only talking about the LGBTQ perspective, and that's only one small part of it. Uh, but it's bad enough <laughs> that it would be awful. So I don't want to hear any more about how he's the normal Republican and, yay, you know, the normal Republicans won. No, <laughs> no, I'm terrified of a DeSantis presidency. So I actually would prefer if Trump just won the primary and then lost again because no, nobody cares about Trump anymore except for his, you know, dedicated followers. So Ron DeSantis, of course, is already causing irreparable harm to the LGBTQ community. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard about the Don't Say Gay Bill. Um, What's scary about him is that he is trying to control the educational system. Like, he is trying to indoctrinate kids with hatred. He's also um, famously against critical race theory, even though critical race theory actually refers to a graduate level course. It's become the catch-all phrase to refer to the teaching of actual history, the teaching of how... Um, white people in America actually treated black people all throughout history. The reason why we do that is so that we can learn from our mistakes and move forward. Um, watch the Star Trek Voyager episode, A Living Witness. I just rewatched that recently and I was like, wow, this is way ahead of its time being made in the 90s because it really applies to what they're trying to do with critical race theory. Um, anyways, it's scary how he's trying to control <laughs> the educational system in that way, trying to indoctrinate people. Now, ultimately, I think he's going to lose. He has declared war on wokeism. He says the anti-woke people are going to win. We're going to destroy wokeism. Uh, he, he has used those words. There's a war against wokeism. And I think... That in the long run, him and all the other politicians and talking heads that are like him, that are um, fighting a war against wokeism, they're going to lose in the long run. Um, and I'll explain why I say that in just a couple of minutes. Um, but I think in the meantime, while we're getting there, it's going to uh, be uh, really bad for the LGBTQ community. I think a lot of harm is already being caused and will continue to be caused. Again, I, I fear that that shooting in Colorado is just the start. I'm terrified uh, of, of what else could come. Um, and I think the Don't Say Gay Bill will um, be directly responsible for um, kids being beaten or um, possibly even killed by others. Um, that, that stuff is already happening, but I think it will continue to get worse. And kids... Um, committing suicide, killing, taking their own lives. That is a big thing amongst the trans community in particular. Um, and this, this hateful, hateful rhetoric, this anti-woke <laughs> agenda is uh, what is causing it and what's going to continue to cause it. And that is why I do not want that in the White House. Um, now, um, let me take a second to talk about this anti-woke thing, this, this woke the whole woke thing. Okay, so first of all, if you're watching this video, if you've gotten this far, I'm assuming you are on my side. You are left wing. You are um, not anti-trans. Um, 
you are at least liberal, if not progressive. Um, what I want to tell you is stop using the word woke unless you're using it this way I'm just using it. It's to talk about it, to have a discussion about it. But I mean, don't use it the way that they use it. The right wing uses it. I have heard people on the left use the word woke the same way that people on the right use it. When you're referring to cancel culture, maybe going a little bit too far. Maybe you think that we're being a little bit too nitpicky. Maybe that's not a really harmful thing. I can't think of any specific examples and you can debate whether those types of things should be canceled or not. Um, um, but I have heard people on the left saying, oh, well, in that case, I think woke is going too far. I think that's a little too woke. Stop it. Stop it. Don't ever bring the narrative down to their level. Let's call out woke, the term woke, the word woke that's being used for what it actually is. So I came up with my own definition for the word woke, uh, the way that it is used uh, by the right wing in this country. And I am going to uh, share that with you now. Woke, a word used by sociopaths with the purpose of demonizing empathy and human compassion in order to gain power for oneself or the perception of power for oneself. That is what the word woke means in the context that it is used by Ron DeSantis and people like him. Okay, now you can you can say maybe I'm going a little too far by saying it's said by sociopaths. I'm making a judgment there. Okay, you can take that out. That's fine. It's still a word that is used to demonize empathy, caring about other people, putting yourself in other people's shoes and wanting them to be happy and successful and be alive <laughs> uh, and human compassion. That's what wo the word woke is used for, to demonize those things. <laughs> uh, what? You, 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 you mean you care about gay people and, and, and trans people, woke, woke, you're not allowed to care about people, you're not allowed to have empathy, let's call it out for what it is and stop, for God's sakes, using that word ourselves, uh, don't play into their narrative, that is what the word is, and yes, it is used um, in the case of um, the politicians and, and the talking heads, it's you, not the band, David Byrne is awesome, but you know who I mean, <laughs> like, like Matt Walsh and Tucker Carlson and such, um, to gain power for themselves, um, to gain money and power. They don't care if the Boston hospital gets blown up. They're getting a nice little paycheck and more viewership and more power. And I have threw in the perception of power because I think maybe some of the um, just everyday people who um, behave that way uh, have this perceived power that they gain over other people um, that they are being brainwashed into thinking that they're getting from people like Matt Walsh and Tucker Carlson, et cetera, et cetera. And on the bright side, I'm going to end with a little bit of optimism. I do think over the long haul, as I said earlier, that um, the the anti-woke movement will lose and woke will no longer be a thing nobody will use that word anymore uh, it'll be in in the history books it'll be long gone people will have forgotten about it um and this is why i think this is going to happen um so i i take my own my own self as an example i grew up in a time in the 80s and 90s where i um knew something was different about me, but I didn't understand it because there was no information. There was no knowledge. Uh, the only thing <laughs> that was out there was media portrayals of transgender or transsexual people or um, transvestites, and it was not very positive. I did a whole video about this like a, a couple years ago. You should check it out. It's how media affect my trans identity. Um, it's one of the first videos I did for this channel. Um, I look very different then, but <laughs> you should check that out. Um, but anyways, yeah, it, so I, I, there was no information. There were no examples for me to look at. There were no like other trans people for me to go, oh, okay, so I could live that way too. I think what really changed was the dawning of the internet. Um, that was a way to get that information out there. That certainly was a big thing for me. Uh, watching other trans YouTubers is what helped me to learn. I also did my other research on the internet, but it helped me to not feel alone and start to understand who I was. Um, and kids growing up in, in schools today are seeing more and more people like them uh, because the information is out there and there are other people like them. And then the more that they see 
people like them, the more they're going to feel comfortable being themselves. And you have people like Tucker Carlson saying, oh, well, there weren't such things as trans people five years ago, like acting like it's just a trend <laughs> and not the fact that all of us have always existed. We just didn't understand who we were and we were scared to come out because we didn't see anyone else like us out there. Uh, now that so the more people that come out, the more people who are going to feel comfortable coming out and being, oh, there's other people who are like me, so I don't have to be afraid anymore. Also, they have the knowledge and the information that I did not have. That's the big difference. And what is also going to happen to go along with that uh, is that straight people, cis people, uh, kids in particular, because there are more and more kids coming out are going to be seeing more and more kids like that and it's going to become normalized to them and it already is happening i already see it happening in the in the youth today um so they're just going to be raised um to accept trans people because it's going to be your best friend it's going to be your brothers your sisters your cousins uh it's going to be the you know uh, the kid at school, they're just—they're just, they're just going to be everywhere, and so um, you can pass all the "don't say gay" bills you want, um, but eventually, uh, kids are still going to ultimately grow up um, being surrounded by LGBTQ people and having um, compassion for them. Now, don't misunderstand me—I'm not saying that oh, well, the "don't say gay" bill doesn't matter because it, you know the kids will still see gay people anyways. No, 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 no. It's still going to cause irreparable harm. And I still stand by and not ever wanting DeSantis to be anywhere near the presidency. Um, so they're going to cause a lot of harm on the way. But I think just eventually over a long period of time, we're just going to have more and more young people who are exposed to LGBTQ peers and more and more LGBTQ peers will exist and woke won't be a thing anymore eventually. Um, so that is my positive spin on it. Although I do think the negative spin on it is that a lot of people are going to probably die or be harmed along the way before we get to that point. And that is the scariest part uh, for me. But uh, uh, this war against wokeism, you're gonna lose that. That's a losing proposition. It's gonna take too long. And unfortunately there'll be casualties, but uh, you will lose that war eventually. All right, I think that will be it for this video. Uh, thanks so much for joining me for uh, the political uh, rantings of a trans woman. <laughs> um, I'm not going to probably do this very often. I think this will be a special thing. Um, I think next month I'll probably just be back to my normal HRT updates or whatever cheery happy things that I want to talk about. <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just a reminder for those of you who are um, not a fan of me or <laughs> or don't agree with what I said, you, you can disagree if you're respectful, but um, as per usual, any hateful comments that show up, I will delete them. Nobody else will ever see them besides me. Um, and if they're really long comments, I don't even read the whole thing. Like, it's really funny to me that somebody like put in all this time for <laughs> to write hateful paragraphs. And if the first couple of lines are hateful, then I, I don't care what the rest of it says. I will delete it. Um, probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, <laughs> but here it is at uh, the end. So if you want to waste your time writing hateful comments, maybe find another platform i heard twitter is pretty good for you right now maybe go over there i don't know <laughs> like my channel will not be used for a platform for hateful comments so um but i would appreciate any uh loving comments anyone wants to give but also you know you can disagree with some of my points if you do it in a respectful way i am always uh here for a good intelligent um debate that does not involve heat anyways that's enough of my ramblings and rantings whatever word you want to use uh thank you so much for joining me please subscribe if you have not already i do lots of videos on my transition my hrt uh and things of that nature so you should check all of those out as well as i cover star trek uh do a lot of top tens related to star trek and i do star wars the mcu things like that nerdy things so check out all that stuff and i will see you really soon thank you everybody goodbye Thank you.